I was born in the island of Samos, the Aegean island of Samos, which is close to the Asia Minor coastline. There was a civil war around me. I remember right-wing soldiers parading through the village on their way to fight the guerrillas in the mountains. But I lived in the lovely village overlooking the sea. You imagine the village up high and the sea down low. I had uh, my relatives around me. When we used to go to, to school, we, uh, we were given a slice of bread and we would go to the olive oil factory there and ask the fellow there, could he toast the bread for us and dip it in oil? That was our thing every morning. Every know? morning. So at, when you came to Australia and just before with your parents, you came straight to Brisbane? Yes, yeah, via Sydney, of course, but uh, my uh, uh, um, uncle and auntie uh, sponsored us. And uh, what was it like living in Brisbane as a young man? Uh, well, we used to walk to, to uh, school for a start from walking all the way from Dutton Park through Gladstone Road to the State Eye area. And then when we moved to um, West End, I would have walked through Musgrove Park a thousand times, you know. And then as I, we grew up uh, around sixth, seventh, eighth grade in our teens, well, we just hung around. Usually there were a lot of um, students that would come from ethnic background, just as, as they did, uh, as they did in uh, West End Primary School. Did you so, tend to make friends amongst? Yes, and I also used to be a paper boy. Okay. So I would walk from the primary school across the, uh, the uh, Victoria Bridge mm -hmm. to the city to sell papers in the afternoon. Oh, you mean standing on a street corner? Newspaper or? boy, yeah. Okay. Paper to Lee, you read it all about it. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start, um, when did you get the job as a graphic designer? What happened was I've always painted um, before that, but when I was going to school at night time, at the art school, I met a friend who became later became my brother-in-law, and he said there was a job going at um, Jay Gadsden Proposed Limited, which is a packaging company. Mm -hmm. And that's where I worked for 18 years. Though I painted through, throughout those years. Yep, yep. I took um, what was happening in the factory with the inks, I took it into my studio. Mm -hmm. And I showed paintings as well as soiled uh, canvas, yeah, uh, like these. Yes. I hung around in a, as in a fishing, uh, in a um, clothesline mm -hmm. within the gallery and showed my overalls as um, well. the byproduct. Sorry? That was the byproduct, yeah. yeah. And uh, so that, that was really quite central for your work for some time at that point. Yes. And you also started making large-scale paintings that look like rusted surfaces? Yes, with uh, uh, commercial images. Again, they were stencil the images were stenciled on the canvas. But some of them didn't so much have an image. They were almost... Or oh, some of the more uh, uh, rusted well, surfaces you know, you might with a touch of uh, uh, markings, factory markings. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I did one like that in that series, the large ones you're talking about, but the others were, uh, had uh, more colour and depicted a commercial image or some gra mm. graffiti. But then I did a lot of other smaller ones like that, yes. Mm. Yes. It was the, fact, the factory that influenced me most in how to mm -hmm. paint, and that is throwing the paint while the canvas was standing rather than on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now I sometimes might do that, but mainly it's throwing the canvas. If the inks happen on the side of, of uh, the printing machines, 
because yeah, you use and words can, like weathering and soiling. Yes, yeah. Uh, Which probably. seems to be at odds with the idea of transcendence. I, I know, I know, <laughs> but I wanted to make it gritty as well, you know. <laughs> That's the idea. The weathering, um, as I call it, well, it's in every, everywhere, it's everywhere. It's in us as we age. Uh, uh, there's a kind of uh, beauty in it or some depth. Spe there's depth in uh, a weathered surface because that's how the universe works. It breaks down, there's packaging and things like that. Old tins, everything I, that I comes my way, I, yep. I throw down and let it soil. And of course, it also has a suggestion of our waste. I do have a painting in the National Gallery, Waste. Okay. That was done 20 years ago. <laughs> look at the waste nowadays. <laughs> so you look at the waste and all these uh, um, items that are used by the thousands and then thrown away. Yep. But at the same time, the other way is the way I'm looking at it as well. It's a kind of transcendence or... In 91, the director of the Institute of Modern Art, Nick Zutis, mm. and invited you to be in the Second Language exhibition. That was quite a significant exhibition. Very significant. In Australia, not just... In Australia, Australia too, because Nick been, uh, was very much interested in multicultural... Being uh, a Greek-Australian himself. Being a Greek-Australian. He was pushing the multicultural um, art much earlier than a lot of other people did in later mm -hmm. years. And uh, it gave us a free reign, and my work was for um, polystyrene pillars, and there were collapsed columns yes. with Greek and English writing. So I would have maybe wog on it. So I'm making a multicultural statement. And on the corner, I had uh, black plastic bags full of my rubbish uh, newspapers mm -hmm. fill. And they were more or less connected to a kind of collapse of civilization. The influence has been all around, you know, it's not, there's the Greek influence, there's the uh, contemporary um, influence of this society in Australia. You know, if I was somewhere else, it might have been different, maybe still with the Greek influence, but, but different.